Our poker vlog journey finds itself in a new territory this time, Denver, Colorado. We meet up with a buddy and ski Copper Mountain for two days, and it was breathtakingly beautiful. The mountain was a good mix of intermediate and advanced runs, but you better believe with a name like Wolfgang, I'm only skiing the Black Diamonds. After a few days of shredding Copper Mountain though, our degen tingles kick back in and we check for the nearest casino. Good news for us though, it turns out less than one hour from Denver is a mini Las Vegas called Blackhawk. Who knew? And when I say mini Las Vegas, I really mean it. There's one main strip that's literally called Main Street, and on it are like seven casinos. The casino of choice for this episode is Ameristar, we're into the 2-5 uncapped game for $700, and it's six-handed. But when we get to the table, we learn some very interesting and important news. First, there's no plexiglass on the table, and second, the game has a max bet. Coming from Los Angeles and only having played No Limit Hold'em, I have no idea what the dealer is talking about, so I inquire and learn that the most I can raise on any street is $100. What? Time to figure it out, I guess. 700 in our stack, we look down at King Kong from the small blind, middle position limps. The button limps as well, I raise it to $25, and both limpers call. So we're going three ways to the flop with 80 in the pot, which comes ace, five, four, two diamonds. Not the best board for our hand, but I should have the range advantage here. Out of position though, I decide to check, and the middle position now bets $25. I think our hand is too strong to fold just yet, so I put in the call. Heads up to the turn with 130 comes the 8 of hearts. 6-7 now makes a straight and there's a back draw or heart draw. I check again and he bets again this time for $40. I think our hand is still too strong to fold here so I call. The river with 210 in it comes the 6 of spades. I check for a third time hoping to get to showdown but that's not what happens. He bets $75 and I think a fold just makes the most amount of sense here so that's what I do. $600 in our stack, we look down at ace king of spades from under the gun, I raise to 20. Small blind and the big blind call, so we're going three ways to the flop, which comes 10, 4, 6. Absolutely nothing going on for us here, and the small blind leans for $35. I make an easy fold. 570 in our stack, we look down at pocket sixes from the cutoff. Folds to me, I raise it up to $15, and the button and the big blind call. So we're going three ways to the flop here, which comes 6, 4, deuce. Bang! We flop top set on a draw heavy board, action checks to me. I bet small here for $15, and the button now raises me to $50. The big blind surprisingly isn't done with the hand as well, he puts in $50, and the action is back on us. This is an amazing spot for us to put in the 3 bet, so I make it the most I can possibly raise, $100 more, I make it $150, and both players make the call. For context though, in a regular No Limit Hold'em game, I would have liked to size up to $200, but uh, we're going three ways to the turn here with just about $500 in the pot, which comes the seven of spades. Pretty bad card as it brings in the obvious flush draw, but also some random straights as well. The big blind checks, and I decided to check here now that the spade draw came in, and the button bets $100. The big blind makes the call, and we're getting an absolutely unbelievable price here. And even though I don't love this spot as our hand decreased in strength with the seven of spades, but because of the pot hods, I stick the $100 in there, hoping for a board pairing river. The river with 797 in it is exactly the card we needed. The seven of diamonds pairs the board, and now the big blind leads out for $100. With this kind of a line, obviously I'm gonna be raising here. Just unfortunate I can't make it like $400 or something and get a bunch of value, but I'm, I'm in click it back to $200, which is the most I can do and the button folds. Big Blind doesn't look too happy about it, but puts in the call. Great news for us, he shows pocket fours for the flop set and the lesser full house by the river, and we are gonna drag that almost $1,200 pot. Pocket Kings again here from middle position. We have 1,200 in our stack. The button straddles on for 15. I 3x him to $45 and my left calls and the button straddle folds. Heads up to the flop with 112 in it comes 3, 4, 10. An above average flop for us, I decide to play it tricky here and check. An opponent now shoves all in for around $90 and I snap him off because what else would we do here? The board runs out 7 of spades, 7 of hearts. He shows ace of spades, king of diamonds for absolutely nothing and we scoop that $292 pot and make an extra $90 along the way by checking the flop. 
Five handed now, we look down at pocket tens from the button. We have 1400 in our stack. Folds to me, I raise it up to $20 and just the small blind calls. So going heads up to the flop here, which comes queen, nine, seven, two spades. Not the best board for us, but when she checks to me, I bet $20 and uh, she pretty quickly calls. So still heads up to the turn. Turn with 85 in it comes the three of clubs, which is pretty much a blank. She checks again, and uh, I decide to check as well here. In hindsight, I think we should be betting here to get value from spade draws. Additionally, we double block a 10 coming on the river, which would bring in king jack and jack eight, making us straight. Nevertheless, the river comes the eight of clubs, and she now leads into us for $50, which is very polarizing. I think she could have one pair and a bunch of bluffs here. She could also have a bunch of value, but uh, when the front door flush draw misses, I put in the $50, just curious as to what she has. And uh, she shows us the goods here with seven, eight of hearts for river two pair and scoops that $185 pot. What do you guys think of my call here? Leave a comment down below. We take a break to compose ourselves and check out the sports book here at the Ameristar. It's actually a pretty sick spot and somewhere I'd enjoy watching a game at. To top it off, it's sponsored by Barstool Sports. However, there's no honeys for us to talk to here, so we're back to the only action we can get here at the Ameristar at the poker table. 1300 in our stack, we look down at Ace King Offsuit from the button. The $15 under the gun straddle is on, I raise it to 40. Only the straddle calls, so we're heads up to the flop, which comes Jack, 9, 5, 2 spades. Under the gun checks, and this is a board that's gonna favor the under the gun straddle calling range more than mine, so I decide to check it back. The turn is a good one for us, gives us top pair, the ace of spades. He checks again, and uh, I wanna build the pot and get some money in there, so I bet $40, and unfortunately though, he folds, so we scoop that pot. 1350 now in our stack, we look down at ace queen of diamonds from the big blind, the button straddle's on. Small blind calls, and I pop it up to $60 here, and it folds all the way back around to the small blind, who puts in the call. Heads up to the flop here comes king, 10, eight, one diamond. We have a few draws, so when the small blind checks, I decide to keep up the aggression and bet $45, representing ace, king, king, queen, stuff like that. Small blind puts in the call, so we're going off to the turn with 220 in the pot, which comes the 10 of diamonds. Not the best card because it pairs the board, but we do pick up some additional outs with the diamond draw. So when the small blind checks, I decide to check it back here. I don't want to get raised and I want to see if I can make a flush or a straight on the river. It'd be pretty gross if we bet here and then he popped us like 3x and we'd have to fold. The river comes the king of clubs, which gives us two pair with an ace kicker. But when the small blind leads for $100, I don't really think too long about it and just make the boring fold. Ace four of hearts here from the big blind. We have 1250 in our stack. And like it has been the entire night, the straddle's on, this time from the cutoff position. I three X him to $45 and just the straddle calls. So we're going heads up to the flop here, which comes ace, king six. We flop top pair. I decided to play this one slow and check here. And uh, the opponent checks it back. So we likely have the best hand here. The turn comes a three of spades. Pretty innocuous card, so I bet $30 for value here. And uh, the opponent in the cutoff now decides to raise me to $90, which is strange to me because he's basically saying he has a set of threes. Pocket sixes would have bet flop, as would any ace, I would think. So uh, it's possible there's more bluffs in his range here than value. So I put in the additional $60 and we're off to the river. River comes a jack of hearts, which doesn't change too much. Uh, I doubt he was bluffing with queen 10, so the only other hand that gets here on the river now is king jack that we had beat. Uh, I decide to check, and now he fires $100 into this almost $300 pot. Uh, if, if he has a speed here, I want to see it. I put in the call. He turns over 3-6 offsuit for two pair, uh, and he's going to scoop that $472 pot. $1,000 in our stack, we look down at pocket rockets from the small blind. Middle position raises to 15 and I repop him to $40. He calls, throwing heads up to the flop here, which comes king, jack, eight. Out of position here and with the betting lead, I fire for $30 and he pretty quickly calls. Turn comes the eight of diamonds, which gives us two pair and we now beat king, jack. Uh, so I decide to size up here and bet $100. If he has a draw, he needs to pay for it and I doubt he's gonna be folding a king here. Uh, and that's exactly what happens. He eventually does make the call. So we're going off to the river with 345 in the pot, which comes a seven of hearts. 
Love that card. The draws miss, and the board is still nice for a king to pay us off. I bet $100 again here for value. And he pretty quickly folds and said he was open-ended. We dragged that $445 pot. We're four-handed now, we look down at ace-jack suited from under the gun. I raise it up to $20 in the small blind calls. Heads up to the flop here, which comes 10-9 queen. Nice board for our exact hand here with the open-ended draw and backdoor spades. Small blind checks to me, and I don't really want to get check raised here with just ace high, so I decide to check it back. Turn comes the 10 of diamonds, which doesn't improve us in the slightest. Small blind leads into me now for $40, which is basically saying that he has a good hand. It's likely that he has a queen of some sort or potentially a 10. With my draw here, uh, I put it in the call, so we're off to the river. River comes the king of diamonds, so the poker gods shine down on us and give us the goods. Small blind bets small here for $30, which doesn't make too much sense if he had a boat. And because we're not worried about the boat here and the fact that we called the turn and now hit our straight, I raise him to 130. He goes into the tank here, ultimately finding a fold, so we're just going to drag that $285 pot. We rack up our chips here at the Ameristar and head to the cage. We got out of the game for $1277, so a profit of $577 on the night. Yo, that does it for our session here at the Mirror Star in Blackhawk, Colorado. Just an hour away from Denver where I was staying. Had a great day skiing today, had a great day at the tables. We made 577 out for 1277. So drop a like, smash that subscribe button as my buddy Rampage would say, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.